Welcome to uh, Lecture 5 on Power Series. Again, we're still in Section 11.8 from Stewart's Calculus. And for those of you just tuning in, uh, this uh, series of lectures is made for my Calc 2 students. It assumes a certain background in Calc 2 as if you've been sitting in it on the class the entire semester. So if you have never had Calc 2 and you haven't been sitting in on a Calc 2 class or you've never studied in any way, you may not follow this. But you're welcome to try. Okay, so last lecture we had just come up with a, a theorem that says given a power series one of three things can be the domain of uh, there's one of three possibilities for the domain of convergence the domain of the series one of the possibilities is it converges for all possible x another possibility is that it converges only for the x it expands around and the other possibility is it has a, a non-zero finite radius of convergence. So it converges at on some interval centered around the thing that you're expanding around. And it may or may not converge at the endpoint. So we're going to do some examples of finding the radius and interval of convergence. Uh, like I said before, most of the time the ratio test is going to be useful. You should, might want to check to see if you're dealing with a geometric series, because if so, that's a little bit quicker, um, the geometric series test. And sometimes if everything's raised to the nth power, the root test might be useful. But let's, uh, I've got two examples here, and let's look at these. So let's look at this first one. The first one, well, it's not a geometric series because of the n factorial. Uh, the root test isn't good because of the n factorial, so I'm going to use the ratio test. So let's use the ratio test. So first thing we're going to do is try to figure out the radius of convergence. And then once we do that, we can figure out the interval of convergence. So the ratio test, we're going to look at the limit. n goes to infinity of, whoa, OK, negative 1 to the n plus 1, 2 to the n plus 1, x minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. And that's going to be over negative 1 to the n, 2 to the n, x minus 1 to the n over n factorial. So we're looking at this limit. Before I go on, what is the A in this power series? What am I expanding around? Yeah, if you said it was A equals 1, you're right. A equals 1, because this is x minus A here, right? x minus A. And then the second one I wrote, what is my A? My A is going to be A equals 6, right? Because this is my x minus A here. OK, so let's go back to what we were looking at over here. OK, so I need to simplify this before I evaluate the limit. So of course, invert the bottom and multiply. Um, I, I can take the absolute values around all of these factors and quotient uh, terms and uh, quotients and factors. Negative 1 to the n plus 1 or to the n, when I take the absolute value of that, that just gets that's just 1, right? So I lose that negative 1 when I take the absolute value. And the other, only other term, the only other factor of issue is going to be the x minus 1. That may or may not be negative. So I'm going to have um, 2 to the n plus 1 is positive, n is positive, and x minus 1 to the n plus 1. OK, and then negative 1 to the n is the absolute value. That's just 1. So I get 2 to the n. Oh, that's a factorial. Sorry, you guys. That's n factorial, n factorial. n plus 1 factorial, and then x minus 1 to the n. OK, so what's that going to be then? Well, I can simplify a little bit. 2 to the n plus 1 divided by 2 to the n. Let's write this out. Limit. And it goes to infinity. That's just going to be 2, right? n factorial divided by n plus 1 factorial. Let me just remind you n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1 times n factorial, right? So 
that's going to be n factorial over n plus 1 times n factorial. That's going to be an n plus 1 in the denominator. And then x minus 1 to the n plus 1 over x minus 1 to the n is just x minus 1. And notice, as n goes to infinity, regardless of what x is, this is 0. So what do we have? This series converges for all x. So the radius of convergence is infinity. The interval of convergence is, you can call it all of R, or you can call it negative infinity to infinity. It's all real values. It's all of R. Okay. So this next one, again, I'm going to use the ratio test on because um, I've got an n factorial, so it's not a geometric series test, and it's not a good root test one. So let's do a ratio test. Okay. And so when I do the ratio test, I'm looking at the limit as n goes to infinity of the n plus first term, which is n plus 1 factorial times x minus 6 to the n plus 1, all over 6 to the n plus 1. And then that's all over um, n factorial. 6 minus x, x minus 6 to the n over 6 to the n. So again, we can invert and multiply and simplify those factorials. The only thing that could be negative here is the x minus 6. So that's where I'm going to keep that uh, absolute value. So n plus 1 factorial x minus 6 the n plus 1, and then inverting and multiplying brings that 6 to the xn up there. And then I get n factorial x minus 6 to the n and 6 to the n plus 1. And now I can simplify a little bit, right? So I limit n goes to infinity. What have I got here? n factorial divided by n plus 1 factorial divided by n factorial is just n plus 1, right? And x minus 6 to the n plus 1 divided by x minus 6 to the n is simply x minus 6. And then finally, 6 to the n plus 1 divided by 6 to the n is just 6. So now again, we have two possibilities here, right? If x is equal to 6, each of these terms is 0. So this limit is 0 if x equals 6. But otherwise, x minus 6 is some non-zero constant, right? And n plus 1 over 6 goes to infinity. So this is infinity if x not equal to 6. So in other words, it diverges for all x not equal to 6. It converges at x equals 6 only. So the radius, this is in a situation where the radius of convergence is 0. And the interval of convergence is just singleton 6. That's that point you're expanding around. OK, so let's get rid of these and try another one. OK, so here's another one. Let's look and see if we can figure out what, this can, uh, what the interval of convergence for this is and the radius of convergence. Again, this is not a geometric series because that square root of n. And it's not a good root test because not everything is being raised to the nth power, in particular that square root of n. So we're going to use the ratio test again. So if I use the ratio test, I look at the limit as n goes to infinity. Uh, let's make that big absolute value. OK, the n plus first term. So rather than 4 to the n plus 1, I get n plus 1 plus 1, which is n plus 2, right? x to the n plus 1 over the square root of n plus 1. And then finally, 4 to the n x plus 1, x to the n over the square root of n. And that simplifies limit n goes to infinity. 
and inverting the denominator and multiplying the only thing that could be negative is the x so i can simplify those those absolute values and i get four to the n plus two square root of n absolute value of x to the n plus one and that's going to be over four to the n plus one square root of n plus one absolute value of x to the n and that's going to be what that's the limit as n goes to infinity of well 4 to the n plus 2 divided by 4 is going to be 4 to the n plus 1 is going to be 4 right x to the n plus 1 divided by x to the n is just absolute x and then I get square root n over square root n plus 1 that square root n over square root n plus 1 goes to 1, so the whole thing goes to 4x. So this is going to be a situation where we have a non-zero, non-infinite radius of convergence. So it's going to converge absolutely. Let's change. Converges absolutely if 4 absolute x is less than 1, right? Which is the same as saying negative, well, absolute x, absolute x is less than one-fourth, and um, negative one-fourth less than absolute x, less than one-fourth. Okay, and it diverges if 4x is bigger than one, which is the same as saying either x is less than negative one-fourth or x is bigger than one-fourth. So there's one, there's one, um, we've got, we've got to check on the endpoints now. So we basically roughly know the interval. The interval is from negative one-fourth to one-fourth. At this stage we know the radius. Radius of convergence is what? That's going to be one-fourth. Because what is my a in this case? Yeah, a, we're back to just a equals 0 here, right? So from 0 minus 1 fourth to 0 plus 1 fourth. So now we're still looking for the interval, and that interval is going to be from minus 1 fourth to 1 fourth. We just have to decide if those endpoints are included. We have to decide if it's open or closed brackets. So let's try this. Let's go um, blue again. So at x equals minus one fourth, we're looking at the sum n equals one to infinity of four to the n plus one times minus one fourth to the n over square root of n, which is sum n equals. 1 to infinity of 4 to the n plus 1 minus 1 to the n times 1 over 4 to the n all over the square root n. And the 4 to the n plus 1 divided by 4 to the n is just 4, so that's the sum. n equals 1 to infinity of 4 times minus 1 to the n over square root n. And this converges by the alternating series test, right? So that converges by the alternating series test because the terms go to zero and it's an alternating zero. That's an alternating series. So this negative one fourth is in fact in the interval. There's a square bracket there. And let's look at x equals one fourth. Okay, and in this case, it's going to simplify down to sum n equals 1 to infinity of 4 over square root of n. And this is a p-series where p equals 1 half, right? This diverges. p-series, p equals 1 half, which is less than 1. So this right endpoint is not included in the interval. And there is our radius of convergence is a fourth, and our interval of convergence is from negative a fourth to a fourth, including the left endpoint, not the right. 
and we don't have time for another one here, so we'll stop here.